conversation between a travel agent and a customer. The customer wants to book a coach ticket. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully. Good morning. I'd like to book a coach to London. I was hoping you had something available this Saturday afternoon. Good morning, sir. Take a seat and I'll just check for you. Uh, yes. We still have several free seats for Saturday. Where will you be leaving from? There are three pick-up points in town, Main Street, Centenary Square or the Central Bus Station. From Centenary Square, please. That's easier for me to get to than the bus station. And what time would you like to leave? There are coaches on the hour every hour, from 12 through till 6pm. Well, I'm meeting someone at the station in London and I need to be there for 4.30. So, which one would you recommend? Hmm. Well, there's one leaving at 1 that arrives at Victoria Station at 4.10, if that's any good. Traffic is usually quite light at the weekend and the drivers tend to make good time, so I think you'd certainly be there for 4.30. OK. That sounds just right. I think I'll take that. I can always phone ahead if I'm going to be late. And when are you returning, sir? Actually, I'm not sure when I'll be coming back, so I won't book a return ticket, just one way. I can always book you an open return if you'd like. You can use this at any time within the next month, as long as you contact us first to reserve a seat. Well, there's a chance I might be getting a lift back, you see, so I'll just pay for one way. I don't want to buy a return if I don't need it. OK, no problem. Are you travelling alone? Just the one ticket, please. I'm going down to visit my daughter at university. My son's meeting me at the station, so it's a proper family reunion. Very nice. OK, well, I can book that for you if you like, sir. That'll be £23.50. Now, I just need to take down some details. Can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Matthew Upton. That's U-P-T-O-N. And your address? 34 Allersley Road. Allersley. That's A-L-L-E-S-L-E-Y. And your telephone number? 01732 558 997. And your email address. We'll use this to send confirmation of your travel details. Matt257 at yahoo.co.uk. OK, thanks. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. Before I forget, I'll be taking a little luggage. Is there a set luggage allowance? We offer a very good luggage allowance. You can take two suitcases as long as they're no more than 20 kilos each. That's 40 kilos in total and one small item of hand luggage on the coach. Most people find that more than adequate. Any additional items carry an extra charge of £10 for each bag. I certainly won't be taking that much, so I should be OK. I was worried I might be taking too much. 
Would you like travel insurance included with your ticket? It's an additional £2. No, I don't think so. No problem. It's not compulsory. OK. How will you be paying? Actually, I've been having trouble with my debit card today and I've left my chequebook at home, so I'd better pay in cash. You'll give me a receipt, won't you? Certainly, and we'll send confirmation to your email address as well. So that's £23.50, sir. If you just wait a minute, I'll print you off a receipt. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a guide named Matt, who is introducing their trip in Wildlife Haven. Now you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the first part of the introduction carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Matt, and I'm one of the three guides here at Wildlife Haven. Our job is to make sure that you all have a great time here with us and go home feeling happy and relaxed. As you can see, we're away from the city in a remote area between a national park and the sea. To encourage you to relax, there are no radios or TVs, and the only phones and newspapers are in the office. So, if peace and quiet is what you've come for, this is the place to be. From your cabin on the hill, you'll find you have the national park behind you, and you can look out from the sea from your front balcony. Your luggage will be unloaded from the bus and taken to your rooms in a few minutes. Once you have picked up your key at reception, please locate your room and check that all your luggage has arrived. The daily program here at Wildlife Haven is flexible and only as demanding as you want it to be. You should each have a brochure setting out the facilities and various walking tracks you can take. And on the bus, you are given a green sheet setting out a number of group tours in the coming week. If you want to join any tour, just write your name and room number on the relevant sheet along the wall here. Tomorrow, there is a Beachcombers and Rock Hoppers tour exploring marine life in the rock pools along the beach. Or, if you'd prefer to go inland, there's a guided forest walk that takes you off the walking tracks. If you want to catch some lunch, you could join the beach fishing expedition. And at night, you'll see there is a moonlight forest walk that leaves each night at 7 p.m. So there is plenty to choose from at Wildlife Haven, and of course, that includes just sitting on your balcony watching the waves roll in but I would recommend my favorite tour, the Waterfall Walk. This departs at sundown each day and also provides the opportunity to have a moonlight swim. Now you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. In the second part of the introduction, you are going to get some advice from Matt. Listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. You've chosen to visit us in January, which is one of our hotter months. And although you may be tempted to wear a minimum of clothing, you should always take precautions against injury, particularly in the National Park. This includes sensible footwear. 
You'd be surprised how many of our guests ignore this advice and end up being sorry. And socks are a good idea too. And even though you might be under trees a lot of the time, it's a good idea to wear a hat in this hot climate. There's no need to be too concerned about walking in the national park, provided you use common sense. It's true that there are poisonous spiders in the park, but they are really more frightened of you than you are likely to be of them. I should also warn you against eating any wild berries. Some are edible, but you should avoid them all. We'll provide all the food you can eat. Well, that's about all for now. Dinner is from 6 to 8 p.m. in this building. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between a student, Kayana, and a professor about an assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Hi, Dr. Reed. Are you busy right now? Do you mind if I come in for a second? Hey, Kiana. No, I don't mind at all. Thanks. I just wanted to say that I'm enjoying your Urban Studies course and that I'm having some trouble with the first assignment. OK, no problem. What do you want to ask? This is my first time writing a paper of this length. All right. What sort of trouble are you running into? Well, writing more than 10 pages is actually turning out to be quite a task. I've been rereading some of the material, and I'm just not sure how to approach the assignment. Yes, it takes some time to get used to academic writing assignments. More time than I expected, really. I also want to do a really good job on the assignment. I don't want to put a half-hearted effort into it. I'm glad to hear that. I'll say that these assignments get easier to manage as time goes on. That's a small relief. I mean, it gets easier to plan the assignment and to organize one's time, but it still takes hard work and a sincere effort to produce a good piece of academic writing. My role is to guide you to the readings I think are the most relevant and to give you tips on managing your time. OK. Could we talk about the readings then? Sure. We can go over them. I guess I want to ask about the Cole House text first. It seems like a pretty interesting book. But sometimes a bit over the top, no? I would recommend reading just the first part of the book. It's the most relevant to the assignment that I gave you. The rest of the text goes on about a topic we will cover later in the semester. All right. I'll just read the intro then. As for the Peely article, oh, did you read that one? Yes, I accessed it online and then printed it out. OK. I would recommend you review that again. Also, remember what I said about the Liebskid article? I think you told the class to focus on the research methods, right? Yes. She approaches the problem in an innovative way. Let's see. For the Gary article, I think you should... Let me see. I think it would be best for you to read just the conclusion. Just the conclusion? I see. Yes. I would ask you to read the whole thing, but this way would be more efficient. Speaking of which, you should not bother reading the Wolfson article. Yeah, it didn't seem particularly relevant to the topic. Let's see. Any other reading you wanted to talk about? Let me see. Um, yes, the Cuddler article. What do you think of that one? Ah, yes. How could I forget? That one is pretty central to the topic. I really think you must go over it again.
Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 20A to 30. Now listen and answer questions 20A to 30. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to ask about? Yes, I wanted to ask about the line graph that you provided. It seems that the legend identifying the different parts is not there. Ah, it must not have been photocopied correctly. Here, let me explain them. They all represent percentages of the population in Manassas, OK? Line 1 here at the top is the percentage of people who were born in a foreign country. Born outside the country. OK, and this one? The next line down. Line 2 refers to the percentage of people with citizenship. All right, got it. Those making a middle class wage are represented by the fifth line down. OK, middle class wage earners. And the line number 4? That is the percentage of people with a college education or higher. All right, and the one in the middle? That one is the percentage of population who are married and have children. Got it. Thank you so much, Dr. Reed. I really appreciate your help. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. In this section, you'll hear a lecture on coral reef. First, you have some time to read questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully to the lecture and answer questions 31 to 40. Do you fancy diving in the wonderful world of coral reefs, green sponges, colourful fish and red crabs? It is a rich garden beneath the waves. But how much do you know about the corals? Are they animals or plants? What are the threats to coral reefs? Today, Mr Tim Harford, Executive Director of the Coral Reef Alliance, is going to introduce the facts about coral reefs. Good afternoon, everyone. Coral reefs are one of nature's most magnificent creations. It is filled with thousands of unique and valuable plants and animals. Over one quarter of all marine species depend on healthy coral reefs. Humans also depend on coral reefs. These marine ecosystems are the primary source of food and income for millions of people, a vast repository of valuable chemical compounds and medicines, and a natural wave barrier that protect beaches and coastlines from waves and storms. Coral is actually the exoskeletons of coral polyps. Made from limestone, these skeletons build up over time, forming the reef. New corals are born each April. At a certain hour, on a certain night, mature corals suddenly release clouds of eggs and sperm into the sea. After the fertilised eggs take root on the seafloor, they can grow up to 15 centimetres per year. Coral reefs are present in the waters of over 100 countries. These are warm, 18 to 29 degrees centigrade, shallow, sunny regions primarily between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. 
Only clear, warm salt water can support a coral reef, and because sunlight is crucial to the reef's survival, the water must also be shallow. The algae that grow on coral provide much of the coral's food. In deeper water, algae cannot get the sunlight they need to grow. Most coral reefs are in the tropics because natural conditions there are perfect. In their modern form, coral reefs have thrived on Earth for over 50 million years. In recent years, however, more than 11 percent of the world's reefs have been lost, with another 16 percent severely damaged during the El Nino event in 1998. Up to 32 percent of coral reefs may be destroyed by human activities in the next 30 years if we do not take action now. Corals and coral reefs are extremely sensitive. Slight changes in the reef environment may have detrimental effects on the health of entire coral colonies. These changes may be due to a variety of factors. One of the greatest threats to coral reefs is human expansion or development. As human population increases, so does the harvest of resources from the sea. Due to overfishing, reef fish populations have been greatly decreased in some areas of the world. The removal of large numbers of reef fish has caused the coral reef ecosystems to become unbalanced. As we know, corals are also very popular as decorations. A large amount of the most healthy corals are selected by commercial collectors. They sell the corals to souvenir shops, where a large number of tourists wait to purchase them as decorations or souvenirs. Coral reefs also receive much damage from both commercial and private vessels. The leakage of fuels into the water and the occurrence of spills by large tankers are extremely damaging to local corals. Although much of the coral reef degradation is directly blamed on human impact. There are several natural disturbances which cause significant damage to coral reefs. The most recognized of these events are hurricanes or typhoons, which bring powerful waves to the tropics. These storm waves cause large corals to break apart and scatter fragments about the reefs. Home to a diverse community of creatures, coral reefs are underwater treasure chests of color and activity. Predators and prey swim and crawl among the coral in nature's never-ending dance of life and death. This lively, fascinating world beneath the waves is just waiting to be explored. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.